All right, everyone. Welcome to another uh, video for Unit One, Lesson Four. In this exercise, we were tasked with um, creating five print statements that generates the exact same random numbers, the five exact same random numbers every time it runs. So I'm just gonna show you. I've already wrote six lines of codes for you to show you how it works, and then we're gonna tweak it a little bit so that we get it to do what it wants to do. So if I run it once, we're going to get these five set of numbers. And watch, if I run it again, we're not going to get exactly the five set of numbers again. Let's see. So our goal is, well, every time I run this program, I want it to generate five random numbers, but the exact same numbers that we generate. So we're going to tweak this code. So along with importing the function and range, we're also going to import a function called C. So in Python programming, especially dealing with random number generators, um, if a seed value is not set, as in you don't run the seed function and give it a value, the seed value is automatically assumed to your system, computer's date and time to generate a random number. So uh, in Python programming, creating random numbers is not truly random. It is dependent on a seed value. And they thought the best seed value to use to create or mimic true randomness was to use system time. So if we wanted to set a seed value so that any time we run, we're going to get the same exact set of random numbers, you can set it to an int value of your choice. I'm going to use my favorite, one of my favorite numbers, 42. So if I run this code now, a seed of 42 is going to generate these five random numbers in this order. It's going to start off at 82, 15, 4, 95, and 36. If our arguments for a random range function were 1 and 101. If I run it again, I'm going to get 82, 15, 4, 95, and 36. So um, seed value helps us control what random values we can generate, especially when you're testing your problem or code in the future. One last little note. The random range function always includes the starting value, but never includes the last value. So in this program, we wanted all the values from 1 to 100. Therefore, I had to add 1 to my end value of 100 so that I can include that value. Big, big class.